Okay, like this one. Go for it. Minute and a half. I'm going to run and get water while you guys think about it. Okay, we have a lot voting A. I'll give you a hint. A is not the right answer. But it's partway to the right answer. Any questions? Ooh, I see answers changing. Anyone wanna ask a question? Looks like you guys were debating something in your, inside your head because most of the A's are now flipping to one answer. Okay, so this question gets to the idea of what is a formation reaction? Can you guys tell me the qualities of a formation reaction? What has to be true in order for it to be a formation reaction? Oh, a standard enthalpy of formation. Okay, yeah, one mole of product. So whatever your product is, there has to only be one mole of it. That's what standard means. What's formation though? Oh, actually, Have you guys watched the video on enthalpy formation yet? Or is that tonight? I don't remember. Um, yes, Kelly got it. Elements are in their natural state. Yeah, so whatever your reactants are, they have to be elemental. And then you form products. And the standard means uh, STP, so standard temperature and pressure, 25 degrees Celsius, one atmosphere of pressure, and then also one mole of product. And so you guys were, were right. Anyone who said A was right in that you do have to flip the reaction. You have to flip the reaction, which is going to flip the sign from a positive to a negative. That is true. But you also have to divide the whole reaction in half. So instead of a two, you'd get a one. Instead of a three, you'd get a three half. Instead of a one, you'd get a one half. And then enthalpy also gets divided by two. So your answer should be B. 
which most of you flip to from A. So you must have been debating between those two things. Yeah, so anytime they say enthalpy of formation, sometimes the test is less about the enthalpy or how the enthalpy behaves, and it's more about predicting that reaction. So if they could say enthalpy of formation, you should be able to tell me what a formation reaction is. They could say enthalpy of combustion. You should be able to write out a combustion reaction. They could say enthalpy of neutralization. You should be able to write out a neutralization reaction. So pay attention to what type of reaction it is because that will determine um, a lot about the problem. Yes, yeah, so you have to flip the reaction to make NH3 a product. So formation of NH3, that formation reaction of NH3, should be forming NH3 from its elements, which are nitrogen and hydrogen. It has to be balanced. So in normal times, we would do a two here and a three here, but this enthalpy, this like little degree sign means it's standard. So you have to balance it so there's one mole of NH2, which means everything, all the coefficients get divided by two. So your reaction would be one half N2, three halves H2, and then one NH3. That would be a formation reaction for enthalpy. So when you're comparing it to this one above, it needs to be flipped and divided in half. Yeah. Okay. So speaking of that Pogel, you guys went through basically two different views for the same idea. The first book, the guided inquiry stuff, that was all about um, atom combination. And then the one last night was on formation. So enthalpy of atom combination versus enthalpy of formation. I want your opinion. Which one, if, if we had only done one, which one was more helpful for your like understanding of the concept? I have two votes for the Pogel. Any the um, enthalpy, the heat of formation Pogel. Anyone else? Three votes. Oh wow! Everybody said it was. Uh, can you give me a reason why? Why was that one more helpful? Yeah, the Pogel is definitely like a simplified version. The first packet was um, was definitely more in depth. That's true. Uh, Riley and Kaya, can you give me a reason why you liked the atom combination? Like why that was more helpful to you? It definitely, the first one definitely gave more like background information be behind what you were looking at. Okay. All right. Good feedback. Thank you guys. Thank you for the feedback. All right. Let's keep, let's do this one. So this is, this is again, um, looking for the the enthalpy change for the overall reaction, but they want you to use standard enthalpies of formation from your book. And I think they start on A21.
Anyone run into questions yet or are you rolling? Oh, whoops, the 34 is not supposed to be negative. I got carried away with my negatives. Good catch, Kaya, thank you. Can anyone verify my answer? Apparently this is not a Pear Deck slide. Does anyone beat me there? Or have questions? Oh, good. So I just did the same thing twice. One was kind of like showing you what the reactions were what the formation reactions were. And then this is like the using, not using the formula. And this side is using the formula. 
I did not write out the whole like flipping of the reactions though. Can you explain the left side? Yeah, so the left side, um, I'm basically just trying to think like, okay, this, this value they give me in the table is for a formation reaction, which means it's for the reaction where ammonium is a product. But in here, I want ammonia, ammonia to be a reactant. So I'm going to have to flip the sign from reactant to product. And I'm going to multiply it by 4 because of the coefficient. So that's my like processing here. And then the, my math should re reflect that. I have a flip sign. I have it multiplied by 4. And then same thing, like on this side, on the product side, NO2 is a product. The value in the table is given to me in terms of NO2 being the product. So I don't flip it, but I do multiply it by 4 because of the coefficient. And then same thing here with water. Water, I want to be a product. The value they give me in the book is formation, which means water is a product. And so I'm not going to flip the sign, but I am going to multiply it by 6 because of the coefficient. So this little box here is kind of like what you would do if you would rather just think through it than use the formula. And then this side here is, is using the formula. You just don't want to combine the two methods. You want to pick a method and stick with it. Don't combine the methods. Any other questions? Okay. Let's do this one.
Questions, comments, concerns? Obviously, you don't have to write out as much as I did. I just want to show you like every single step possible, but you definitely don't have to write out everything like I did. Yeah, okay, so good question, Kelly. Can you go over how to decide if the number is the opposite sign that is on the table in the book? So the table in the book is, is if you look at the title, uh, oh, if you look at the like label, delta H naught F means it's the enthalpy, it's the standard enthalpy of formation. So when they give you something like this, for Fe2O3, you know it, it's gonna match the standard enthalpy of formation reaction, right? Which is why it's such a big deal to be able to write formation reactions. Okay, so it's for this reaction. The, if this reaction proceeds forward, you get an enthalpy of negative 826. So it, basically what that's saying is if you take iron and oxygen and you combine them or you let them combine, you're going to form uh, iron 3 oxide and that reaction is going to release 826 kilojoules of energy for every one mole of iron three oxide that's formed, right? So since this is a formation reaction and the reaction is lining up with Fe2O3 at, as a product, when I use Fe2O3 as a reactant, basically I have to put in that same amount of energy in order to break it apart. So I'm flipping the reaction, Fe2O3 goes to 2Fe plus 3 halves of O2, right? So the, the reaction in pink there is where Fe2O3 exists and it is pulled apart into iron, elemental iron and elemental oxygen. In order for that reaction to happen, uh, one would have to put in 826 kilojoules of energy for every one Fe2O3 you're going to pull apart. Well, in our reaction up here, what's happening? Are we forming this Fe2O3 in our reaction or are we going to pull it apart in our reaction? And we're going to pull it apart. Yeah, we're going to pull it apart. Exactly, because it's a reactant. So it has to be pulled apart before it can reform into these other things, which means we are going to have to put in 826 kilojoules of energy. That's why I flip the sign. So anytime you're not using the listed thing as a product, you have to flip the sign. Does that help? Maybe, kind of, yes, okay. Uh, another question, how do you know when H is zero? Oh, okay, so uh, enthalpy of formation is gonna be zero, which means no energy, no heat is put into the reaction and no heat is released from the reaction when there's no reaction right? If there's no reaction, we're not going to have any heat absorbed or released. So the real question that you're asking, Kaya, is when is there no reaction? And there's no reaction for multiple reasons, but when we're looking at formation, there's no reaction when something is already formed, right? So again, think about a formation reaction. You're going from elements to a product. Well, when is, when is, when are the reactants already formed? They're already formed when they're in their elemental state. So if you have something in its elemental state, like aluminum, elemental aluminum, or elemental iron, 
these two are going to have an enthalpy of formation of zero because they're already formed. We don't have to put energy in to form them. We don't get energy out when they're formed because they're already formed. So anytime you have an element, your enthalpy of formation will be zero. Does that help, Kaya? And others? Okay, good questions, you guys. These are really good questions. Anybody else have questions? I have a question for you if you're done. Okay, here's my question for you. What are the units? And this is an either or example. I keep showing you how to do this problem two ways. You definitely don't have to do it two ways. I just want to make sure I'm showing you whatever way makes sense to you. So what are the units here? Good guess, Claire. Thank you for being the first one out of the gate. Out of the gate. That's the phrase, right? It's, I'll give you a hint. It's not kilojoules per mole. Anyone brave like Claire want to give me a guess on the units? Or Claire, you want to give me another guess? Okay. <laughs> Another good guess, Kaya. Kilojou kilojoules per gram. It's not kilojoules per gram. Let me let me show you a couple things and then and then you guys can guess again. Okay, so enthalpy of formation is kilojoules per mole, right? But on every single one of these cases, we take the kilojoules per mole and we multiply it by something. We take the kilojoules per mole and we multiply by something. We take the kilojoules per mole, we multiply by something. We take the kilojoules per mole, we multiply by something. What are we multiplying by? Question of the day. What are we multiplying by? To what? Two moles. Yeah, we're multiplying by two moles. That's what, a, that's what the unit of a coefficient is. The unit of a coefficient is either atoms or molecules or moles. So we're taking the enthalpy of formation and we're multiplying by moles. What happens to the units? What is kilojoule per mole times mole? Kilojoules. Yes. Your unit is going to be in kilojoules because you had you just multiplied off the moles. That would be an awesome test question, don't you think? How are we doing on time? We have five minutes. Can you have a question on this? Or should we see if there's another example? Okay. Let's see if we can do this in five minutes. I'll give you a minute head start.
I don't think octane's in your in your table. Whatever side I was just on said the enthalpy of formation of octane is negative 250 kilojoules per mole. Okay, this would be a good place to stop for us and pick it up tomorrow. That is, those are the enthalpies.
of combustion for two moles of each, but they're asking for enthalpy of combustion per gram. So our last step would be convert it to convert it into per gram. So I'll hang out in case anyone has questions for a couple minutes. Otherwise, we'll pick up here tomorrow.